Hi, this is Teo from Pucklebox.com. Today I'm going to show you this box set of White Knights watercolor that is made by St. Petersburg from Russia. Now in this review, I'm going to show you some color swatches, color mixing. I'm going to show you some sketches that I have painted with these colors and also compare the color chart with other brands. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at them. This is the box set of 12 pens that I bought about a year ago. They are sold in different boxes, like this is the 12, and there is also the 24. If you check out their website, they also sell up to 48 pens in a box set. So this is the box with 24 pens, and you can see here that there are empty slots here, so you can easily fit in another 12 pens in the middle. So a uh, nice thing about this box is there are a lot of mixing area here and at the top here. But for the smaller box set like the one that I have, you only have two mixing wells on the cover here. I want to compare this box to other boxes that I have that are around the same prices. So this is a Winston Newton Cotman box also of 12 pens. This is slightly more compact compared to this box here. And the other thing is on the cover there are three mixing wells. But the main difference is in the Winston Newton Cotman box set, the pens are half pen size compared to this, which are full pen size. So what is a full pen size? A full pen size is something like this. This is a standard full pen size. So if you use up the colors, you can actually take out the colors here and just replace them with uh, any full pens. White Knights watercolor, they are sold. Um, the pens are actually sold individually as well. So if you, you can buy them separately or you can just buy an empty full pen and then just squeeze in whatever color that you want. And this pen actually can fit into this uh, holder here. Of the 12 colors, 9 colors are single pigment colors. The rest, yellow ochre, umber, and neutral black, they are multi pigment colors. The binder used is Gun Arabic and St. Petersburg. They say that their colors are light fast, however, I don't have the means to actually test it. Let's start with Cadmium Lemon. This is PY35. So you can see that lemon yellow, cadmium yellow is not very transparent. I would say it's semi-opaque. Let me move on to cadmium yellow medium. This is a warm yellow, almost like an orange, like a gamboche. This is also not very transparent, I would say it's semi-opaque as well or semi-transparent depending on how you look at it. Next color is yellow ochre. This is a double pigment color made of PY41 and PY1. This is a good color for mixing skin tones and this is I would say more transparent. Oops, I think I mixed the wrong color. So let me go to Carmine first. Carmine is 170. So Carmine is a cool uh, red color. Very strong. And now Cadmium Red is PR108. So far, most of the colors are semi transparent or semi opaque. Next is Ultramarine. This is a nice strong shade of ultramarine. You can see some granulation as well. This is transparent. And so is carmine that is on the left. Then there is blue. Blue is PB15. PB15 is usually phthalo blue. So let's see what this color is. So this is definitely a shade of phthalo blue. This is almost like Viridian or Thalo Green. Very strong color, a very nice color that you can use to mix with Carmine to get neutral tones like black, grays. Next is a Green. This 
is um, quite a dark green, a warmer green. As you can see, this is pretty intense. I think it should be umber. Yep, this is umber. And burnt umber is next PR, PBR7, sorry. This is going to mix with ultramarine to give you a very nice gray. So umber is a three pigment color, PY43, BR7, and BK7. And the last color is neutral black. So these are the 12 colors. Now I'm going to use them to mix our color wheel. I'm going to start with a cool color wheel first. So I'm going to use cool colors like cadmium lemon. So I have one lemon here. You can see that this is opaque. Next, I'm going to use a uh, thalo blue. Thalo blue is usually transparent. So we get this nice um, sort of a bluish green color. Let me use more yellow and see what I can get. So that I can get a yellow green. So if you use more yellow, you'll get a yellow green. I can feel that this is not very transparent because lemon is not transparent here. And next I want to use carmine. Carmine will be a transparent cool red color and I will mix it with phthalo blue to see what we can get. We get a nice bright shade of purple. And if we, if we mix lemon with carmine, let's see what we get. This is a very dulled down orange, you see, a very muted orange. Next, I'm going to paint a warm color wheel. For the warm color wheel, I'm going to use cadmium yellow medium, the orange light color. Start with that. And I'm going to use cadmium red so that I can mix a very bright orange. So you can see you can get a very bright orange here with the warm yellow and the warm red. Now with the warm yellow, I'm going to mix with ultramarine. This is a very nice shade of ultramarine. I really like it. So let's mix it with ultramarine and see what we get. We get a very muted green color. A very muted purple. So if you want a nice bright purple, you can go for phthalo blue with carmine or you can actually go for ultramarine with carmine. So this is ultramarine with carmine, so this is a different purple. Just now I also mentioned the mixes that I use for mixing grease, that would be emerald green and carmine. So emerald green is this color here. The mixture has to be correct, if not, it will sway towards another to the, to the color. So you can get some sort of a grayish tone, something like this. If you mix a lot of paint, then you're going to get a very, very dark color. And this is something that I use to mix, uh, to color very dark areas. You can see how strong this is. All right, the other color I want to show you is the gray that I can mix with ultramarine and burnt umber. So let me use this area here. Ultramarine is this guy here and burnt umber is this. So I can mix a very nice shade of gray. And finally, you can make some skin tones with yellow ochre and some of the carmine. So I'm using yellow ochre and some of the carmine. Get a tone there, something like this. A very nice skin tone shade. 
Let me show you the color chart that I have painted out. Now from the color chart, I can tell that the colors are actually more pastel-like, especially when I compare them to other color charts. This is a Winsor & Newton Cotman color chart. So you can see that this color chart appears to be much stronger. Also, Sanalia also is quite strong. This is Schmink versus White Knights. You can tell that the colors here are also much stronger. And lastly, this is Core Watercolor. So Core Watercolors, the colors are a bit muted, more pastel-like. So I would say that Core Watercolors is quite similar to White Knights, but Core Watercolors is much more expensive. But color charts are just color charts. When you use them, when you use the colors for actually uh, painting or sketching, they perform much better than I expected actually. In actual use, as long as I don't use a lot of Campion colors, I can get pretty transparent mixtures. For example, for the gray tones here, I use Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. This is Burnt Umber. For the tree here, I use Cadmium yellow, medium, and also yellow ochre. For the greens here, I use mainly the emerald green, which is transparent and mix it with carmine, which is this color here. So once I mix emerald green with carmine, I get a very dark shade that is very good for painting trees that are really very dark. For the foreground, the plants here, the grass here, I use lemon yellow and mix it with a bit of a blue and sometimes I would just use the green by itself and mix with a bit of red just to dull it down but as you can see the colors here are actually quite strong and the line works the line art they can uh, come true uh, even if there's a watercolor wash over it because I use mainly transparent watercolor so when I compare it to the color chart earlier they may look a bit pastel-like, however, in actual use, I find that they are actually quite intense. This is another sketch. I use Ultramarine, Burnt Umber, Thalo Green, and some Cadmium Lemon. Again, you can see the line art showing through from underneath the watercolor wash. In this sketch, I use cadmium yellow medium, so that would be the orange-like paint. And when I mix it with red, you can see here, this area is here, it's starting to block off the lines. So you can tell that those areas with ultramarine mixtures, the lines are much darker, but those areas where I use cadmium yellow medium and cadmium red, it will cover the lines like that. But if you don't use the wash um, too thick, you don't mix too much pigment, you, are still, you can still use them as transparent watercolor, just add more water. Overall, I would say this is quite worth the money. I paid US $24 to buy it on eBay and that includes shipping. If I compare this to Winston Newton Cotman, well, Winston Newton is cheaper, but with this box set, you get twice the amount of paint. So let's recap some of the good and bad things about this box set. For that price, you get a good amount of paint. Um, another good thing is 9 out of 12 colors are single pigment colors. So when you mix them, they don't turn muddy as quickly compared to um, multi-pigment colors. The bad thing is you need to know the limitations of some of these colors because there are cadmium colors like cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow, medium, and cadmium red. If you use these three colors to mix with other colors, then the resulting mixture is not going to be transparent because these three colors are quite opaque to start with. So if you are using it for pen and ink watercolor, maybe this box set is not the most uh, appropriate box set to get. But um, overall, if you are using for painting, I would say if you know the limitations, you can work around it. But overall, generally speaking, it's good value. And another thing I want to talk about is uh, when you're cleaning this particular palette, make sure you clean the underside here. If you are mixing water, 
the water is going to flow to the back here and when you're looking at a palette like this you're not going to notice the water so you might just clean this area to make it dry but there's still some water trap and when you close the palette the water is going to drip out from here and it can make a mess out of things so this is a problem that i face quite frequently because i always forget to clean uh, this side here and it's not very easy to clean because the gap is quite small here I think that's all for my video review today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And I will also post a link to my text review. Um, in that review, you will be able to see the scans of all the colors because sometimes my camera is not very accurate at capturing the correct color. So if you want to take a look at the more accurate color that is picked up by my scanner, you can check out the text review. That's all, see you in the next video. Remember to subscribe to my videos if you haven't done so for more sketching tips, techniques and sketching videos. Bye!